got something really completely different to show you today. Um, these are looking very, very sorry. Well, actually, I say these. It's just one shoe. The other one's already been restored. These, uh, for those of you familiar with shoes, will instantly recognise due to this sort of uh, bulging area here in the chisel toe. These are George Cleverly bespoke. Um, these were at, this pair were made for Prince Rupert Lowenstein in uh, 1969. Um, I have quite a few pairs of Lowenstein's uh, old George Cleverly from when he died a few years ago. Um, Lowenstein, he was the financial manager for the Rolling Stones. I do actually have um, several photographs of the Prince wearing various George Cleverleys um, photographed with the Rolling Stones. I have the, the shoe collection. Now these have had a huge amount of work done to them and they, they do look enormously sorry for themselves. Um, but there were well as you can see they're very cracked and dry looking but they look far worse they had a lot of polish and they'd really stretched dramatically the, the skins had stretched here they'd all stretched and become very very baggy and bulbous um, lots and lots of the stitching around here now if, if you've got sharp eyes you'll be able to see there are there are extra stitches which I've put those in um, I've had the elastics out the elastics were all stretched and I've had all the elastics out and re-stitched the elastics by hand through the original holes and made them tighter. What I've done, I probably trimmed the elastic down by about 10 millimeters and just made it tighter. And um, it, it, so the, the elastics sort of pulled this in here, re-stitched all this. All this has been re-stitched by hand around here, lots around the edge and certainly all around here. This was all peeling back, real mess. Now what I put these, these stitches in, I can just get a, a pair of scissors and cut this out now. Um, I've stitched, this is quite coarse thread, I've stitched through the holes and stitched round and round and um, what, I, what I've done, because I've got the bespoke trees on the inside, um, made, for, made in 1969, that's the original shape, that hasn't changed, but when I got these shoes, those trees really rattled about, you could push the skin and pinch it, they, they, it was so dramatically stretched, but what I've been able to do is use steam, um, water and steam to shrink the skin really tightly back onto, onto the original tree, so it's gone back to its original shape. Now, had I not stitched these elastics together, as I, as I, as I shrunk in the skins, it would have opened up here. It would have gone into a V-shape. So I've just purely so that the tension goes on these, on these stitches here and not on the elastics. So um, I've just forgotten to cut them out, but they, they will come out quite soon. But what I need to do now, I've got the grim sort of uh, task of resurfacing this. The skin's all, you can hear it's crunchy. It's scratchy, it's hard. It's very much like the, um, uh, the skin on our heels. If we neglect our feet, you know, you, your skin on your heels, doesn't matter how many times you moisturize your feet, if the skin goes hard and crunchy and flaky, it goes thick. There's nothing you can do to um, restore that skin. You need to use a pumice stone and grind the surface off. And that's very much what I'm going to be doing with these. Um, I'm going to be re removing a few microns of dead skin, just with abrasive paper. That's actually really quite sharp. I think, just feeling that, I think it's 40 grit, it's extremely sharp, um, but you cannot go over the stitching. There is, there is stitching all around here, you can't just blindly rough away, you can work up to the stitching, but absolutely not over it. So this will take hours and hours and hours, it might take me 20 hours to sand and resurface that shoe. Um, but I'll, first of all I'll start with a very, very rough very rough cut and you can see this starting to roll away just working in slightly circular motions and uh, just brush that away and I'll just keep going and going and going for hours and hours and hours this is not a job where you just rag around you would just destroy the stitching never attempt something like this if you're not extraordinarily patient and I'll probably do an hour of this just working away very 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 slowly and then I'll get fed up with it and I'll put it down for a day or two and I'll come back to it and I'll, you can see I've already done around here. That looks a little bit, a little bit, and it feels a little like suede. And that was done with a coarse, maybe 40 grit. Um, it's, that's enough, but I won't do that anymore. As you can see, I've worked right up to the stitching, but you can't go over it. As soon as you go over the stitching, the stitching will just, it will totally disintegrate. You can fold the paper and work. There's a row of stitching there and a row here. Fold the paper and work between it but you just can't go over and it likewise with this stitching up here you can you can work on the skins in between the two rows of stitching and up to the row but you can't go over it now I'll do the whole shoe with the 40 grit it might take 10 hours to go all the way over then I'll go down to maybe 120 grit and I'll do the whole shoe again 
and then eventually I'll finish on maybe 400 grit. And that'll be quite smooth. Um, you'll, you'll feel no rough, there'll be no, no crunchy surface, there'll be no cracks. Any sort of residue will be gone. But the skin will have a very sort of matte appearance and at that point you can then start to put the moisturizers on and you can you can bring the sort of it's almost like a buckskin nap and by by filling it with bear in mind this is very very dry it's been moisturized it's not been moisturized it's been steamed it's been stripped with alcohol and it's been sort of brutalized with the paper this is a very very thirsty skin that will really really draw the moisturizer into the skin and the moisturizer kind of plumps the surface of the skin and then you can you can furiously buff a reasonable shine with a brush and then you can get a you can get a dry cloth and polish a sheen to it so this sort of nap it sort of disappears with the moisturizers and you can get an absolute mirror gloss finish the other shoe is completed i finished it about a year ago if you can be bothered to look through my old videos you'll recognize the shoe and it's got a mirror shine you can see your reflection in it it was equally as bad as this one it really was a an absolute shocker so let's just do a bit more and uh, it's a very 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 slow process so i'm just removing a few microns as skin dries it kind of swells up it swells up it goes hard and it cracks there's nothing you can do to nothing you can do to bring it back apart from just be patient and shave a bit away as i said before very very much like you know the heels of our feet if we decide to you know take a pumice stone to our feet the skin below that grotty surface is nice and fresh soft and our feet don't feel thick just because we've shaved a bit of skin off they just feel as they should these skins are swollen it's swollen by a few microns and it's rough taking the surface off like this it won't you won't miss it's not missed afterwards the skins they don't feel thin you don't sort of think oh goodness me that feels really thin and a bit you know like there's something missing what i'm taking off here is literally microns and it is an agonizingly excruciatingly slow process and i won't sort of bore you keep keep filming it because it really is um very 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 slow i'll, I'll do a few hours off camera and uh, i'll try and uh, Try and, I've got to find some enthusiasm. I don't. It, 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 I hate the feel of this paper. It's rough on the skin. If you wear gloves, it's quite clumsy. I don't like having my skin roughed up. If I'm honest with you, it's te you know I did the other shoe a long time ago, and I do want to wear this pair. They fit me quite well, and I really do want to wear them. But goodness me, I can't tell you how boring and tedious and just a tedious, tedious process. And I'm trying to keep motivated. It's taken me a year to find the motivation to come back to this second shoe. But, uh, once again, completely avoiding, completely avoiding the stitch area. And once I've gone over the whole shoe with that very coarse paper, I, as I say to you, I'll go down to a, a finer grit. But these will have to be cut at least four times. Very coarse, maybe that's, a f that's about 40 grit. Then about 120 grit, two, 240 grit. Um, and ran ran about finishing about 400. I've, I've experimented with finishing with um, with 600. To be honest with you, it between 400 and 600, it doesn't make a lot of difference on the finish. Um, the 600 is a smoother paper, of course, but it doesn't necessarily give a better finish result. I find on regular calf skin like this, but a uh, box calf, um, a 400 is perfectly adequate to finish with. On Cordovans, you need to finish on a much finer, much finer grade of paper. Minimum of 600, ideally 800 or even 1200. But regular, regular calf and box calf is 400, is perfectly adequate. If, if you get the regular calf skin too smooth, it can actually look a little bit synthetic, a bit plasticky. So um, you can remove all of the texture entirely, which is not that desirable. But, Anyway, I'm just going to I'm going to continue this off camera and we'll come back to this at some point and I'll show you some progress. I just need to keep my motivation and enthusiasm up for doing such a, a tedious task. It, honestly, it really is frightfully tedious. You need a lot of patience. Notice I'm sort of avoiding the stitching. I fold the fold the paper and work really, really slowly up to the stitching. Within a second or two, if I run over the stitching, I will lose it. It will just it would just fray and disintegrate. I think that's enough. Very boring, uh, very boring to watch. So um, you'll be fascinated at how well this will come up and it will look mirror finish eventually. Um, this, this sort of horror show of cracks and dead surface, it, it begs belief what can be achieved. So um, 
yeah, if, if you can be bothered, do have a look through my old videos and you'll see the other one being done and the, the, the finish that's already on there. And I can get this one just the same. It's just going to take at least 20 hours.